that day I live in a dream Welcome to Only Trying to Help, the podcast where we try to help you be helpful to other people. I, I, I've i brought on Lisa Simmons Barth, who I've often thought of in times, especially professionally, when I have thought of times where I need to be a good leader or I need to inspire a group or I'm wondering what is the right thing to do here. I have on more than one occasion considered what would Lisa do in this situation so wow. Lisa, would you like to just introduce yourself to the group here? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Simmons Barth. Um, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. That's where I live currently. I'm originally from Rochester, New York. Um, and just put that in there for my mom. Um, and um, I uh, interesting that you talked about me as a leader because that's actually one of my stronger identities of of who I am in the world, whether it's at work or in my own life, um, is being a leader. And um, so I work in higher education at Towson University, and I've worked in residence life for pretty much my whole time, um, which some folks would question my, you know, how does, how do you have the stamina for that? But it's a skill set that I have. And so, but I, when I think about myself, I am the same person that I am at work, that I am in my personal life, that I am with my family and friends. Um, and so I'm in that leader and a person that shows up in the world for folks and for myself and for the folks, whether I know them or not, um, is kind of who I am. You know, I get the sense from you, not just because I know you, but also just because I'm watching your facial expressions here, that it's a real point of pride for you that you are the same person in your personal life who then um, as who you are at work. Um, you, you do kind of light up when you say that. Yeah. Well, I I have to be, honestly. There's no way for me to have, you know, compartmentalize in ways that not being the same person um, in either space. It just, I can't imagine that working, but it is something that um, when folks are like, well, you're so, however they might describe me and what they see, you know, me do or how they see my skills play out. And, you know, they, it's the same. And I, I do have pride in that. I don't, I don't know that I really know why I have pride in it other than, you know, I am me no matter where I am. Um, so I, I think it's interesting that you see that because I, it's just something for me, I guess that happens. I don't know. So the way that I know you is from our work in residence life and a little while back, you were a, a supervisor of mine, a, a leader in my in my life and in, in my early career development. And um, I remember always having the sense that like, even if things went wrong, we were in good hands. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I'm telling you that because you also introduced yourself as, you know, you're someone who shows up. Um, that's who you are. So like, what does that mean if you're you're someone who just always shows up? For me, it means that, you know, if I see something happening, um, I'm I'm not able to avert my eyes, kind of just keep on, you know, like I have to turn the car around. If I, I saw somebody using a wheelchair and fell off the curb, I stop and turn my car around and go, my spouse and I go and help that person up um, or, you know, the dog that's running down the street that doesn't have anybody, you know, we pull over, grab the leash that we have in the back of our car and try to get the dog. And so um, I, I don't, I don't have to be told to do the right thing, to assist folks in the community, whether they're my people or someone else's people. Um, and so that's how I approach the world. And I always have from when I was young till now. And I think there's, you know, there's sometimes there's the helper role is not often seen as, um, I don't know, I wonder about how I might describe it, like is is important that there doesn't have this like, you know, that the helper is kind of like the behind the scenes person or cleaning up after others or, you know, and then it doesn't have quite that role of like prominence, I guess the word might be. 
like like you're you're just a helper around here or you're like an assistant yeah and i think it, it's never like it's never been a choice i've made to be like this is just who i am i do often think about being the eldest daughter of the eldest daughter and my both my parents were eldest and all of my grandparents were eldest and so you know that whole like uh birth order uh piece. Um, just the other day, my mom sent me um, something on Instagram, because that's how we communicate and DMs on Insta. Um, but she sent me something about, you know, why are the eldest daughters feel like the manager of the family? And I was like, well, and so my response was, well, because I was expected to be well, because it's who the world tells us we are. Um, and because, well, you know, we just have to do it. Who's gonna, who else is gonna? Um, but um, and she's an eldest daughter too, and helped and held that role, and still, you know, um, does in many ways. Um, but my being the eldest daughter is that's been passed on to me. Yeah, I am not an eldest daughter, but my mom is, and my grandmother is, and mm -hmm. I have heard this my whole life. And and it, it's what's interesting is it was the the idea of the eldest daughter must do this. The eldest daughter must do that was always very matter of fact in my family. Yeah. It wasn't said with an eye roll or like, oh, can you believe this? It was more like, this is how it is period. Mm -hmm. um, and so although I am not an eldest daughter, so it was never imposed on me. Yeah. I am aware that it is imposed <laughs> on yeah. eldest daughters. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting um, to see it play out, and um, and just to know. Well, in in my family, um, I was the eldest of my cousins, and so mm -hmm. my grandfather, who was also an eldest, he just expected me to always. I was in charge of the kid. I was in charge of my cousins. So even if I wasn't in the same room as Joey, who might be playing with matches. Um, I would get in trouble if Joey was playing with mattress and mattress. And I'd be like, that's so not fair. I'm not even there. Well, you should be, you should know what he's doing. And I was like, how is this possible? And that was one of the doesn't seem fair, doesn't make sense to me moments, of course, but um, because it didn't. But those same expectations were expected um of my mom as well. And you know, I come by them very honestly. Um, but I think it's also who I am, right? It doesn't, um, and it is a role that my my family sees in me um, that, you know, if something's up, it's like, hey, Lisa, you should probably know this and maybe you should come home and check in. Um, and uh, it's, it's, so it is interesting that I, it's self-imposed at times um, and other times folks will be like, well, does Lisa know? Is she coming home? Uh, so the questions. When you speak about um, being someone who just shows up, you use we and you, and you refer to your spouse and say, like, this is who we are. And I think it's kind of cool that you have surrounded yourself with other helpers, <laughs> um, that you you seem to, like, find those folks and, and team up with them. Yeah, I think so. And Katie and I have been together for 22 and a half years. It'll be 23 years in June. Um, and... It is just who we are. She is not the eldest daughter, um, but uh, but it is who we are and how you know we just kind of move about the world. We want the world. We want a world where you can rely on community, um, where the people that are around you care about you and your well being and celebrate you and and also help out when things aren't so great. And so, I it's just in us, and I think we. Um, as a as a couple and as a team, she recently said to me, you know, we're a team. And I was like, absolutely. Like, and that's something that we both value to be able to move through this world and, you know, in our relationship and our relationship with others to approach it as like we are, we care. We it matters to us and people matter. And so that approach is just kind of leads into, I hate using that phrase, but it melds into all the places that we have in our space. Um, you know, of course the news is always so tragic and depressing and there's so much horror on the news, but every once in a while, there's this lovely story about someone who did something incredible and we watch this news story and we all say to each other, 
don't you wish more people were like that? And we nod and say, yeah, that would be great if more people were like that. And I guess I look at you and and and, and probably a lot of the people in our audience, maybe, but I, I look at you as someone who decides to just be that person. Like rather than sitting on your couch applauding some <laughs> helper on the news, you'd rather roll up your sleeves and just be the person who is making the world better. And I, I think that may be something kind of interesting for the audience to hear, which is rather than just enjoying those stories when you hear them and saying, oh, that's so sweet. I love hearing a good story. Be that story. Make that story happen. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I don't know that there's ever this switch that's like, well, today I'm going to make that story happen. It is really innate in me of how I show up in the world. And it has this opportunity um, to, to give me this space of not choosing, I guess. I am that not choosing. I know that about myself. And so if there's this decision to go down this way or this way, I'm like, well, I know what the right answer is here. I know what the right thing to do is. And it's right for me. I don't choose these things or do these things for accolades, for, oh, look at Lisa and what she's doing. I do this because one, I want, I want that person to be okay. I want, it's not, I'm not okay. If I know I left something undone or not attended to that I could have made a difference, even if it's this tiny little difference of like, Hey, let me help you do this. Um, and it's a piece about, I have to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, you showed up, Lisa, you met, I have to meet my own expectations. I have to live my own values. And that's very much my value of showing up for community and being someone that will assist folks in their good stuff and in their tough stuff. And to have folks, I don't know, have somebody that cares. And I think it's so important that folks understand that somebody doesn't have to know your deep, dark, everything to be, to care about you. You can care about folks and want the best for them and assist them in whatever little piece of life is. Um, just, you know, cause you're like, oh, Hey, I see you need this. Let me help out. And then be about your day. Um, I, I'm glad that, you know, I have like a, it's not this like major decision every day. Um, it is just who I am. Um, and I'll admit, like when I make, if there's something where I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming or, oh, I didn't help. You know, like, I'm like, oh, I'm so like, then I'll talk to somebody like, Lisa, it's totally not your responsibility to like do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, well, I was there and I could have helped. I didn't know you needed it. And they're like, it's okay, Lisa, stand down. <laughs> Right. It's like Johnny in the other room with the matches being your responsibility. <laughs> right. Probably. Um, I mean, it's obvious, Lisa, that, that being someone who shows up for others does give you a lot of joy. And listen, like we know that I mean, there's like centuries of research about how altruism and doing good for the world is good for us and lifts us up and makes us happy. And I think the conversation that, maybe is had less often is like, okay, are there times where maybe we're doing too much or are there times when um, you wish it weren't so automatic that you just step right up? And I don't know what comes to mind for you when we kind of entertain that side of things. What do you think? I think there's a couple of things. One of the things is that I know that I have to like, I can't say like this day and this day or this person. I know that my desire to help, my need to help my, like that piece of me probably took away some agency for people at times, right? Mm -hmm. Where I thought I was being helpful, like where I thought, um, and actually I can speak to one time. Um, and I think we talked about this before, but um, I did a, the, um, I did some training and um, in doing that training, there was this whole, this whole discussion. We had a, a caucus on for white folks and, and we were caucusing and we were talking about some things and I was like, and I just became very aware of being the well-intended white chick, right? That um, 
I, in my, like what I thought was social justice and racial justice and anti-racism, but really what it was, was me speaking up for people and speaking over people or taking out, taking them out of the picture. Like, you know, I'm this like rescuer white girl. And um, that was quite an interesting um, kind of reckoning of my own understanding of what, how helping can hurt sometimes and how it can take away it wasn't intentional, absolutely, but um, but certainly took the the stage and put the the attention on me, um, and and I think um, or like became more about me than or me or, or white individuals than it did about um, what I was trying to get across and inequities um, and racism, and uh, and so there was those moments of. But, but, but I, I, you know, like knowing, like, you know, then trying to explain like, but I'm, I'm one of the good ones. Right. And that's, you know, and again, problematic in so many realms. Um, but it was this matter of, um, you know, trying to reflect on when helping doesn't always help or, you know, doing things for, you know, whether it's my staff or my students and kind of like stepping in and doing for them rather than being by their side and helping them, you know, supporting them as they do for themselves or learn to take some of those steps that I might naturally just be like, well, here, let me do it. Da, 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 and it's done. Uh, and you know, knowing that well-intended helping, uh, but not, you know, it's also taking away their voice or taking away, not giving them, you know, the opportunity to stand on their own two feet and just have somebody else helping them. Well, then the, one of the things I've been reflecting on more recently is how helping kind of takes me out of the room, that um, it takes me away from community, surprisingly enough, that at times my role is behind the scenes or, you know, is, is sim something simple as a family holiday uh, meal is um and being you know i'm i'm one of the folks in the family that can cook and knows how to cook like my mother does and knows the recipes that my grandmother had and so i'm the natural one to, to step in and fill in and um but that also means that i'm in the kitchen while everyone else is hanging out at the table laughing and joking and talking and connecting and i was like well i didn't hear that you know my spouse will tell me something. I was like, oh, when did that happen? And she's like, oh, when we were talking at the, th you know, I was like, oh, because I was in the kitchen and um, or I was running, you know, I ran to the store or I did this and I did that. And so um, I've recognized that my role and, and what I'm doing has taken me out of community and I've seen it in my work life as well. And that piece of in, in friends that piece of the duty, I guess, of what I feel and the, how I'm approaching it, you know, but then all of a sudden I'm like, well, I'm not connected or I'm feeling a little isolated here. And so what, what caused that? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And it's me being out of the room. Um, I think what you're describing in both of your examples is that as much as we gain a lot from being a helper and the world gains a lot from our help, there can be a loss. And so in your first example, you know, the, of, you know, wanting to be an advocate for others and stepping up to advocate on behalf of them, the potential loss is that someone else may lose their voice or their power because you're, you're kind of overpowering them. And then in your other example of family gatherings, you know, your tendency to step in and help may pose a loss to you that you you lose out on great memories being built and and the ability to just laugh until you cry with somebody who you love. Um, and I just think there's something interesting there that, that the helpers who are listening ought to hear that there's so much to gain. And maybe at times it's worth acknowledging a little bit lost. Yeah. And that's been one of the things I've been thinking about and reflecting on a lot about how do I get myself back in the room? How do I honor and still show up in the way that I want to? And it's not that I'm being made or there's some demand on me. This is me. And you know, how am I still that person and still that 
you know, in this space, um, but also part of it that I'm sitting at the table that I'm, you know, making time for myself to be a part of things. And so how do I, how do I see that happening? And, um, and that's something that I'm working on right now. So it's not perfect, um, but I'm still working on it. And um, one of the ways that is nice is I've been able to reflect on it with Katie, my spouse, and, you know, and she's seen it too. And she recognizes that that happens that, um, and so, you know, at Christmas, she's like, I'm going to do the dishes, you go hang out with the family. And, um, you know, and so it's, but then I'm not with her, right? So it's like either one of us, but, um, but it is that moment where um, I'm making a conscious decision or, you know, when we're just talking about something like dishes, they, they can wait. I can hang out at the table and spend time with people and then do that later. Um, and, you know, so there's, there's ways of which, but I'm, I'm now mindful of when I see myself not in the space Um, when I see myself not connecting with folks um, and then trying to figure out, you know, how to, to change that. Like we mentioned earlier, the, the, the role of the eldest daughter. Um, But even before you mentioned that I've often thought about the gender divide here Mm -hmm. when it comes to um, holidays and social gatherings and how women really carry a heavy load. Um, even in workplaces, when we're celebrating somebody's birthday or retirement, or there's a potluck, it's usually the women who have set the whole thing up. The men show up to eat, then they say, thanks, everybody. And they walk out without picking up anything, cleaning anything up, picking up a trash can, getting the empty cups. Um, they just say, thanks, everyone who put this together. And they leave and go back to their desks. And in, in in family gatherings, it's often all the women in the kitchen, either cooking or doing the dishes while the men are sitting somewhere, you know, smoking cigars, laughing, watching the football game. And um, I just think there's there's got something's got to give there. And, and I always feel like I'm pointing it out when like it's so obvious. Why, why doesn't everybody else see that the women are doing all this while the men are just enjoying? Yeah, well. I come from an Italian American family. And so, you know, uh, our, our uh, lineage gave the men lots of different things that were their privileges and their expectations versus um, the women or the eldest daughter in my case as well. So double whammy. But, um, and so I have to, like I did, I remember asking, cause it was when my, when I was younger, we had my whole family and we're not a huge family, but my grandmother's sisters would come. So my great aunts and their families. Um, and we, I remember asking, Hey, well, why do they all get to go watch TV? But we, and I, you know, as the eldest, I was included. The little ones went and played, but I was like, all right, Lisa, stop, start cleaning the table and do this. And we got to get ready for dessert and here, put the coffee on. Like I was given all these jobs and they just pushed away from the table and into the, the other room they went. And I was like, how, why? And my mother was just like, well, it's just the way it is. Just, you know, come on. And so even though she wasn't somebody that, and she often did push against, um, you know, those gendered things and the roles that she was given as a woman, but, um, but in the family role, just what it is, just what we have to do. And um, I remember being young, I mean, like, this is not cool, everybody. Um, But being a woman of a certain age, I absolutely grew up in the times when the gender differences and they're still they're still at play today, even though we know the gender and all of its social construct and and roles and how much they don't apply. um, We still fall in line. And uh, but I also come from a family that's mostly women. So (laughs) it also is like one of those things where I was like, well, who else? (laughs) It is only us. Um, But yeah. The strongest survive. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know sarcasm is not useful or kind, but um, it does come out of me sometimes when I'm in these situations where I'll walk into the room where all the men are enjoying themselves and just say something like, seems like everyone's having fun in here. <laughs> just, you know, yeah. kind of leave that just in the space, let it float. Um, and they just kind of nod. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, 
you don't notice everyone else who made this event fun is, yeah. is working hard. You know? <laughs> There's a crew that came in and picked up after you. Yeah. Yeah. Related to you. Um, Lisa, I think we've given the audience a lot to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and maybe it is, you know, where we started, which is, Folks, when you're watching the news and there's that great heartwarming story that pops up once in a while and you're, you're applauding that kind person out there, be that kind person next time you get the opportunity. Um, but also if you're at a work gathering, family gathering, and you see somebody's bearing the heavy load of all of the organizing and cooking and cleaning, like help that person out. Lisa, before we start to wind down here, is there anything that you didn't get to say that you would really like to say? I don't know. I think for me, when you talked about like that, be the person in that story, I think for a lot of folks, they don't know, they, they want to be, you know, be helpful or to be kind or to show up for someone, but they don't know how, right. Or they don't, they're waiting for an invitation. And I guess the thing is, is that whether or not that's like, you know, when I think about and reflect on myself, like, well, you weren't invited, Lisa. I do have to think about like, who asked you to, to help? Mm -hmm. You know, and there, I have to be mindful of like inserting myself into spaces. But thinking about when someone's having a hard day, like I walk in the Glen, you, the Glen where you used to live. Like if I walk on the bridge and I see a student crying as they're walking past me and, you know, they're just like, they might've just hung up the phone and they're crying. And I'm like, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? It doesn't, I didn't need to know the whole story. I don't need to know anything else than other than, like, do you need something? Are you all right? And they're like, I'm okay. Thank you. You know, just that little moment of that student's day. I I don't know why I'm bold enough to do that. I don't. I know it, some people are like, that is bold. You're asserting yourself or like, you don't know her. Why do you ask? And I'm like, well, I don't have to know somebody to care about them. I don't. It's just who I am and I do care. And so if someone's having a hard day, I'm just reach over and be like, hey, are you all right? Do you need anything? I'm walking that way. I can walk with you. Um, and so you don't, there doesn't have to be this grand gesture either on your part or on someone inviting you in to care about them. And so if you are feeling like you can help or that something that you might do might be of assistance, then do it. And if you feel like you didn't do it in that moment, sometimes sending a note afterwards to be like, you know, if it's in a workplace, like, hey, I saw in the meeting today that you were having a hard time. I just know that I saw that and I'm here if you need anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be, again, big gesture, going for like everybody seeing what you're doing or embarrassing someone by asking you know, or you being embarrassed. I know everyone's like, I don't want to be awkward. I'm like, well, life is awkward. So just get over it, everyone. Um, but just to, if you want to help, if you feel the need or, you know, if you don't just to say like, Hey, I, I don't know how to help, but I know I'm just know that I'm here for you. And um, yeah. I guess that you said, you know, I don't know why I'm so bold to, to approach people and somewhere maybe like 20 minutes ago in our conversation, I started to formulate like a little theory and I thought, Kate, don't say it. You don't have any research. You don't know, really know what you're talking about. You're just guessing here. But now that it's come up again, I kind of want to just share my theory and then promise the audience that I will go do the research because I'll bet it's out there. I'll, I'll bet it's out there. I'll You're bet right someone's looked into this. Yeah, I'll bet someone has looked into this. There's probably a whole book written about this and I'm going to find it. But my theory that I started to formulate about 20 minutes ago <laughs> was that I bet there is some correlation between one's willingness to show up and help people and their own, like, I don't know if the word is self-esteem or self-confidence or self-image, but like how highly you think of yourself. And I, I bet that's true. And I told myself, don't say it because you don't know that it's true. So let me just put the disclaimer there. I don't know that that is true. I'm going to find out because what you said maybe 20 minutes ago that made me think of it, Lisa, was 
um, something like, you know, I think better of myself than to be someone who would just keep walking. You know, I, I think I, I'm I'm better than that. And I thought, I bet that's a thing. Like that's that seems important. And I'll bet the people who say, oh, I could never do that. I could never get involved. Maybe just have a little bit less of a um like, again, I don't know if the word I'm looking for is self-esteem or confidence or something like that. But I, I just, I'm starting to really believe there's a correlation here. Um, people who really love themselves and, 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 and think highly of themselves in really healthy ways are probably thinking, yeah, I'm, the, I'm a good person. I'm the kind of person who should step in here. And people who maybe struggle with their self-worth, maybe that's the phrase I'm looking for, mm -hmm. self-worth, they might watch the news and say, well, it's nice that that person was so cool and helpful, but like, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not that great. I'm not, I'm not that helpful. I'm not that thoughtful. I'm just an, you know, an average person. I'm going to do the research. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let me know how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for being here. I will probably ask you again. And please, as a helpful, I always show up in the world person, please don't feel like you have to. Um, we can make space for other people to come on and be helpful too. Yes, we should. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but this has been wonderful and I can't thank you enough. Well, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you and the work that you've done and what you have put in the world to provide folks a platform, to learn how to be good helpers, to learn how to show up in ways that will make a difference. And, and also, you know, to, to kind of reflect on that whole, I'm only trying to help peace. Um, you know, it was a lot of what I talked about is in that through line of only trying to help. Um, but you've done incredible work and I'm really proud of you. And so thank you for what you do. I'm really excited for you.